Fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to our Planet Coaster Let's Play. And here we are in a brand new menu screen. Yes, we are now in Alpha 3 of Planet Coaster. A whole host of changes have come, and I am so glad. Uh, recently, there's other coaster games that are in development, and they've been having lots of updates to them, and we haven't seen so much for Planet Coast, but they've just been to GamesCon, and this has just hit our uh, PCs, and it is... Well, I haven't seen it yet. This is the whole idea of this video. We're going to explore it together. Um, first of all, we've got a brand new screen. I had to create an avatar. Where is he? There he is. Woo! That's me down there. Um, we are now on the Steam version of Planet Coaster, finally. Uh, I'm I'm not a particular fanboy of Steam, but I really do love it when a game is in Steam, just because it's so much easier for me, and I'm quite lazy like that. Anyway, so we're now in Alpha 3, we're now in the Steam version, let's get some things looked at. It's going to be a quick look at lots of these features. So, um, we're going to do a brand new sandbox game, uh, we're going to do a Sandbox? Should we do a sandbox one? And we will do... Oh, it looks like these ones are... Oh, these ones are coming soon, these other ones. Oh, there's going to be a tutorial. That's fantastic. Okay, we'll go for a tropical one. And uh, we'll see... Uh, we'll see what's involved. There we go. So we're going to be going back to our regular parks sometime soon, but for now, we're going to use this sandbox to explore the features of Alpha 3. So, I'm going to quickly whittle through them, and hopefully we can, uh, <laughs> we can actually cover many of them, uh, as, as many of them as we can. First up, there's this new park management tab. This is where players can hire staff and track all sorts of things like finances, guests and park operations. Guests now drop litter everywhere, unless you place bins. Janitors can now be hired to clean up vomit and other things, like rubbish and stuff, if they don't put it in the bins. You can now hire mascots to entertain your guests. A big cookie face person, it's actually a beef burger thing. Uh, of course, there is the King Coaster guy, along with several other things, including the new cow and princess hello princess you right hey oh and the cow the big bouncing cow all staff can now be fired so we can select one of them and click fire haha goodbye go home Ta-ra. There are now staff training facilities. Guests now better react to the mascots and entertainers. Everything now has a cost and an associated running cost with most items. You can see here the trees here are for different dollar values for planting them. However, obviously in sandbox this doesn't make a lot of difference. Our guests actually now make better decisions. They look at the value of rides, coasters and shops and facilities and make decisions based upon that. ATMs are now available so that your people can stay in their park longer. Although this one appears to be floating in the air. There we go, that's better. More detailed information is now available for items. For example, this cash machine here, you can see that you got more facility information about it and finance information regarding to that, the lifetime profit and all those sorts of stats and figures, depending on the item you're viewing. You can now look at people's thoughts, and when they're thinking about a particular ride or shop or something, you can center the camera on that particular item. There is a new improved rating system which gives you a ride rating, a scenery rating, a park balance bonus, and general guest happiness, giving you an overall park rating. Oh yeah. oh yeah! You can now do special priority pass lanes in queues, so you can enable priority pass in a ride, place the entrance, let's place one there, place an exit to priority pass, let's place one there, and let's see if we can connect these particular two. Let's go here, and there. There we go. We now have a priority pass. 
can open our ride to everybody. Ta-da! And the priority passes are now available from the new information booth. There we are, information booth. Staff become less efficient and demotivated when they're underpaid and not very well trained. This guy seems pretty happy though. As well as picking up individual guests, you can now pick up groups of people and put them wherever you like. Cracking. Staff now have the same guest, uh, camera that the guests do. You know, that thing where you can follow them around from various different cinematic, cinematic angles. Yeah, that was the word. At the beginning of this video, we had a little look at the things that are new on the main menu. The new interaction, the My Park section, a brand new 3D glow with interactive population, and of course, the Steam Workshop information and Steam logo. You can now save your wonderful, magical buildings, coasters and other things as blueprints. There you are. My beautiful tower. You like it. And if you uh, share lots of them in the uh, Steam community, you can get a bit of a name for yourself in the game as well. The Steam Workshop is integrated with the game now, and you can do blueprints and parks from inside the game. Um, it's also integrated with that main menu that we mentioned earlier. Uh, Steam friends also appear with their Steam Workshop content, so you can actually share things amongst your friends as well. And there's newer celebrities feature in Alpha 3 as well, where um, people who do a lot of uh, new parks and blueprints uh, from the Frontier development team are also highlighted with a celebrity tag. There's been six new types of roller coaster added to the game, including the Looney Turns and uh, five others, one of which is called Test Pilot. I'm not sure I like the style of that one. And this is one of those new coasters now. This is the Type Talk. This is a pre-made one and as you can see it is eh, pretty cool and it's one of the only coasters that has a loop the loop in it where the top is connected to the bottom and we're about to see that sometime soon yeah look it's just going backwards for some reason yeah look there it is the loop the loop there on the top right hmm, interesting theory yeah, all right, it stopped, pushed it back, and went this way. Cool. We're about to go across the top of the loop. Look, here we go. Over the top of the loop, the loop. Track on both sides. Pretty cool. I like it. Nice feature in the game. This special loop, the loop, is just one of over 40 new special pieces added to the coaster builder. There's some new utility pieces as well, as well as including a cable lift for the Tiamat coaster. So we've got a one here. There's the start of a cable lift. Let's build that. And that looks like a midsection piece. Let's have a few of them. And then a top section, lift end as well. There we are. A nice new cable lift object in this particular coaster. And there's a couple of other utilities in the game too, including a stackable variant of chain lifts for the Eurofighter tracks and a dive drop. Four of the stations, including this one, the werewolf, now has animations with the station and the flooring. As you can see, it just pulled away there. Missed it. Let's just activate that again. Just make a small change. Click off and let's see the flooring fold away. And there it goes. Cool little animations. Remember early when I said that you could do uh, blueprints for buildings and coasters and stuff? Well, this is the blueprint for the coasters, where you can save your blueprint and upload it to the sharing area in Planet Coaster. There's also been a number of improvements to the track editor. You can now uh, clear coaster supports within a section of track. So if you don't want supports for a bit, you don't have to have them. 
There's also a note saying that they've improved the tweaking of the tracks when you're doing your little changes. There are now options to smooth the track or just smooth the banking of the track. And this one was pretty smooth to begin with, to be honest. As I mentioned in a previous episode, the banking widget needed some sort of feedback element, and now it has. It's got a little thing that tells you exactly how much you're banking by, with a little radial indicator and the icon in the middle with the angle. Let's have it there. Track section controls are now actually in the world rather than down in the toolbar, so you can click these buttons here to adjust and work out with your sections. In addition to this booster that is now uh, in the game and where you can set your target speeds and acceleration rates, there is now a dual directional booster that can slow a train, stop it and launch it backwards and then propels it forwards again as it comes back over. This is an example of that. It's called a dual directional linear synchronous motor with brake function. Let's see it in action. Here we go. The coaster brakes and slows down. Quite dramatically actually goes to the end of the section and then gets flung backwards for some reason there's some interesting things you could do with this once the coaster gets up the hill and starts to come back down again it boosts it forward and away they go whilst you're constructing your roller coasters the default track lengths have been changed depending on the different type of coaster. Also, they've added this ride camera whilst you're editing the coaster as well. We can start a test, even though the track may not be finished. You can now adjust the different rules for the track. So, you can say how many um, people you're going to wait for until it's, the train leaves and you can say the maximum waiting time and the maximum loading time and the minimums and also capacity settings as well. When you're in test modes you have live readouts of excitement, fear, nausea and speed information. That's fantastic. Also, coasters now must be tested before they're ridden by guests. It's the Special pieces of track, like loop-the-loops and so forth, can be moved around and twisted without deleting the track around them, and it's just, uh, the, they kind of bend with it, so they can be moved and tweaked in their particular situations. There are now five new amusement rides, including the Cube. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, look at that. Ooh, that looks interesting. Let's get that going. Hmm. All right. Oh, I see. Yeah. I don't like it. Oh, oh, oh my. All oh, right. Yeah, I would definitely vomit on that. On to sceneries and buildings, and there's a new fairy tale type of building style structure stuff thing. Apparently there's over 400 new assets for this. There is now a wider variety of trees and plants than there were before, including a new rock set from the desert sort of style. I like it. There are now lots of pre-built items for scenery, including both the nature and the buildings items. Some of them are pretty cracking, I think. When you're building things, there's now a new duplicate and clone tool which is going to make things a lot easier for you to get parts of your buildings and structures and do whatever you want with them, no matter how ridiculous. There's now new particle effects as well, and add in to the additional ones that were already there, so we can now have a steaming rock. I don't know why you'd want a steaming rock, but you can do. There's, uh, But yeah, there's lots of new particle effects as well. You now have the ability to change the grid side of your building. So instead of just having them at 4 metres, you can now do a grid size of 2 metres, allowing greater flexibility with your buildings. And if you started something and decided you want to split it into two different buildings, you can now do this. 
simply select the bit of the building that you want to do and you can use the new split command wherever it is advance move duplicate I wonder if that's it found it so when you're editing a building you can select a piece of the building and then choose use split from building and all of a sudden it's a brand new building there must be some places where that's useful but uh, yeah, more features the better I guess and on to shops and buildings. Alpha 3 now comes with a load of buildings that are pre-built. Look at this. We've got a drink shack in the shape of the end of a ship. Uh, we've got... What else have we got? We have... That's something weird. Something weird. Okay, we've got a burger store. That's like a nice little pirate-themed thing. We want it to rotate. Uh, yeah, there we go. Burger store! Uh, which uh, looks pretty cool, actually. Including in this, shops and facilities now have their own browser tab here, um, which now includes, of course, the blueprints and the custom. This re is replicated throughout most of the other things. So coasters, you get the blueprint and custom as well. There's also a My Blueprint section, which I ain't got any at the minute. Buildings as well, custom and blueprints. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you could do this before, but you can now add things inside the shop like this. Um, so if you wanted to put an extra barrier in just to keep the riffraff away from your face as you're serving your burgers, uh, you can do. New shops include an, uh, a first aid room. You can have two of them if you particularly want to be safe. We already looked at the ATM and we've already seen the information booth as well. But there are now new, clean, and uh, fully tiled looking cool toilets. Uh, which will actually connect up to the bath. Ooh. Right, you can have two on top of each other. Not exactly sure how that would work, but... Oh well. Ooh, they queue at them as well. Bet you can make a nice little building out of that. Rides, scenery, and even building pieces have now been had the option to customise their items, including the colours. So we can play around and make some of the blocks on this blue, some of them pink, and maybe the black ground a more blacky colour. Wow. Looks like something out of Toyland from OpenTTD. Benches and bins now snap to the edge of paths better, both on the inside and on the outside as well. Lots of bins. We need loads of bins. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, one more. Crack it. There is a now a new align to grid option when using paths. So let's see what that works. Select grid. I see. Look, we can select the grid of the tower there, and we can align our paths to the tower. We can delete the ones that are there, the rubbish ones. There we go. And we, with the new Align to Grid tool, we can make a path that very neatly and very precisely follows the grid of our tower. This is going to be good for making paths go through walls and buildings and towers and so forth. I like it. Cool. Apparently, park guests now throw their rubbish in the bins. Um, I haven't seen anybody do that just yet. Anybody? Oh, here we go. Some rubbish going in the bin. Oh, yes. Over the shoulder, straight in the bin. Oh, here's some more people with some rubbish. Are they going to drop it on the floor? Oh, and a guy. Oh, look at the way he just tosses. Oh, they are total pros at that. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, brilliant. Fantastic. Guests now use park benches and get up and down, apparently. Guests now vomit if nauseous. Look. They've got a new pattern system allowing for greater variation within the clothing. And there's now a more wider variety of body types and shapes and sizes. When guests become trapped, they've got a new animation for it. Those, these ones just seem to be standing there and don't seem to know what to do. Guest thoughts now take into consideration congestion in the park, like the queue for the Coaster 11 is completely full. Well, so. The train tour now has a roughen feature, which just adds nibbles and bobbles to the landscape to make it a little, maybe just that little bit more realistic 
In addition to that in the terrain tool, there is now also four new pieces of water, each that seem to have their own little variety, like a calm one, a rippled one, and a, a very kind of ripply one, a bit dirty maybe. Um, so we've got a, let's, let's, have, let's have a look. So we've got calm water here, then we've got rough water here. Should have, yeah, you can see, look, it's got rough on there. Uh, we've got standing water and dirty water. Here's our standing water, and here's our dirty water. Dirty. There's improvements to the filters as well, so you can filter by the different themes. There is now a multi-select tool which will allow you to select multiple items of the same type. You can see we've got scenery, item pieces, six. Got little, six little barrel baskets, they're all selected at once. There has been several lighting improvements, including the way that the tunnels work and the lighting through them, uh, to water as well, and as to general shaders and lighting in the parks. There has been a numerous amount of tweaks in the lighting and shaders area. There are now more advanced graphics options, so you have a greater control over the way you see your graphics in your game. There's also lots of audio improvements in the game. Some of things like this are they've had lots of voice actors speaking lots of different languages for the game. They've got lots of different noises in the background. Lots of the old placeholder sounds for things like things that are mechanically broken and things like that have been replaced with actual sounds now. Drive chain and chain lift things have been started to be worked on and that is still ongoing. Um, here's a chain lift now but it's not currently being used. If I put myself very close to this chain I can hear a very faint mechanical noise. These sorts of gentle noises. Don't know if you can hear that. Are what help make a game's environment better. And there's also a slight clicking, very smooth running chain that. Very nice. And also not lots and lots of new music for rides, like this one. All very fun and jolly. Cool, I like it. And to round all things off, there's been lots of optimizations as well. So, uh, the game now updates three or times faster than it used to, and it uses half the memory overhead that it used to from Alpha 2 as well. Um, there's lots of different things uh, for optimizations of roller coasters, there's optimized improvements of the model rendering, the animation, the crowd rendering, the particle rendering. Um, there's just so many different things as well as the softer shadow filters. So lots of optimizations there as well and I'm sure there was lots of bug fixes as well. If you want to see uh, the full list of things that I've covered as well as all the little bits I might have smoothed over, there is a link in the description to the actual update notes on the, f on the Planet Coaster forum. But that is going to be all for now. So, whilst I'm here trying out this cube ride thing, which I utterly hate, um, I want to thank you for watching. If you want to catch up with my series, uh, the link to the playlist is in the description, and I'm hoping to add lots of these awesome new features to my park that I've started recently doing in the Let's Play. So, I will see you then. Thanks for watching. Any thoughts, ideas, and questions down in the comment section, and I will see you when I've stopped being dizzy. Next time, ta-ra. Goodbye.